Hi, you guys. Uh, long time no see. Well, still no see, I guess. Um, but it's been a while and sorry, I've been so busy. I moved to a new state, new apartment, new job. Just I've lived, I feel like I've lived so much in just this past month. Um, I moved here like beginning of July and yeah, I've just lived so much life. My work is just absolutely, I love it, but it's, um, which surprisingly, like I didn't really expect I'd love it this much, but I, I really do. And it's just, it's a lot of long hours and I barely have time for myself, but I really wanted to get back into the rhythm of things and start pumping out more videos before school starts. So I hope, I hope you've been enjoying your summer and um, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos um, and yeah, stay tuned. Okay, so um, one thing that I did want to say is that um, if, sorry, if my, I'm baking brownies at the same time right now, my life is just absolute chaos. I have so much to do um, in this new apartment. Love it, but so much to do. And if you hear an alarm, I'm going to step out for a minute and I need to go check on my brownies or else they'll burn. Okay, so um, back to the question. So here I have with me problem 6.81 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. Consider the system shown in the image. The rope and pulley have negligible mass and the pulley is frictionless. Initially, the 6.00 kilogram block is moving downward and the 8.00 kilogram block is moving to the right, both with a speed of 0.900 meters per second. The blocks come to rest after moving 2.00 meters. Use the work energy theorem to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the 8.00 kilogram block and the tabletop. Okay, so great question here. Um, and I'm let's actually talk a little bit about what this problem is even saying. So it's saying that this over here, oh, let's see. So this uh, right here is a system of masses. Okay. And the rope and the pulley are of negligible mass, but we have an eight kilogram block and we have a six kilogram block. And the eight kilogram block, it's moving to the right, right? Which is intuitive. And then the six kilogram block, it's moving down, which also makes sense. And they are both moving with speed right? 0 0.900 meters per second. And that makes sense, right? Because if they're connected by rope, they have to be moving together at one speed. If not, then like that just doesn't make sense. Okay. So let's actually just go ahead and write down our knowns at the same time. So knowns and our knowns are a mass one is equal to 8.00 kilograms. Mass two is 6.00 kilograms. And the speed of the system, so V system is, or V sys, right? So 0 0.900 meters per second. And yeah, so the, both are moving, oh my God. So both are, oh my God, where did it go? Okay, sorry, my like screen disappeared on my iPad. Okay, so, both are moving um, for 2.00 meters before they come to rest. Oh, that's my brownies. I'll be, give me like one second. Oh, you know what? My brownies are gonna have to wait because I'm not paying for extra for Zoom. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so they're moving 2.00 meters. So we have to use the work energy theorem to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the 8.00 kilogram block and the tabletop. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, what is the work energy theorem? So let's go through that really briefly and quickly. Well, this is the work energy theorem, or yeah, work energy theorem. This is the equation, right? And really what this is saying is that work done by the net force on a particle is equal to the change in the particle's kinetic energy. So work done by the net force on a particle is equal to the change in the particle's energy. Okay, cool. So what does that mean for our problem? Well, in our problem, let's talk about the two kinetic states first, right? So at K2, right? Well, we know that K2 is it comes to rest, right? So that's the final state. It's at rest. There's no kinetic energy. Initially, though, 
there is going the the initial um, equation is going to be the kinetic energy right of the of both of the system right and what is the kinetic energy of the system well it's going to be you know half of m v squared right so mass of let's say this is box a and let's say this is box b so m a v squared plus half of m b v squared right and if we plug that in right that's going to be right over here k2 is 0 minus half of ma which is half of 8.00 kg times 0 0.9 squared 0 0.9 meters per second squared plus half of 6.00 0 0.9 meters per second squared, right? Or squared right there, out there. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then what is the total work? Well, there's, what is doing work on this system? So two things, right? So gravity is doing work on this system, right? Because it's pulling down this box B, right? And friction is also doing work, right? Because, um, there's a force of friction, sorry, if the block, if the system is moving this way, there's a force of friction that is working on box A the other way, right? So let's um, let's plug that into our equation, right? So what is that, what is that going to look like? So what is the total work? The total work is going to be the work done by gravity plus the work done by friction, right? And the work done by gravity, as we know, it's going to be um, m m b, right? So the mass of b times gravity times the distance that the box moves plus, right, the work done by friction. And remember that work is doing negative. Uh, sorry, work is doing negative friction. Friction is doing negative work, right? So then we'll have um, We'll, uh, here, so remember that um, the force of friction, right, is going to be equal to um, the force, normal force times the coefficient of friction, right? And the normal force in this situation, right, because normal force is equal to force of gravity. Normal force is equal to force of gravity. So over here, we're going to have, um, um, we're going to have, I should really check on those bodies. Give me like one second. Okay, back. Okay, so the work done by friction, right, is going to be, it's going to be um, this formula right over here, right? So it's going to be, uh, or even like, okay, actually, I'll just write it down this way. It's going to be mu k, right, actually minus mu k, because again, we said friction does negative work. So minus mu k, it's working against the system, times ma g times d, the distance, right? So this is the force of friction. And then this is the distance that it moves, right? All right. So then we have, um, we can equate these together, right? Um, w total, or actually we can plug in our values first, right? So we plug in our values and then we have, um, this is going to be 6.00. I realized I just labeled them one and two and then A and B, but whatever, who cares? Times 9.8. Ignore the units for now, you can add them at the end. Um, and then two minus mu K, which we don't know what this is, times eight times 9.8 times two, right? And this is all equal to, um, okay, yeah, to this term right over here, right? So these two, I should actually like, I'm gonna do that in a different color really quickly. 
But yeah, these two are equal to each other. And so all we have to do is isolate for this minus mu k. Okay, I don't, I have three minutes left to finish this video. So, okay, let's, I'm gonna plug this into my calculator first. And that's great because I don't even have a calculator on me since I moved. Oh my God, which is ridiculous because I'm literally a physicist. It doesn't have a calculator. I'm kidding, I do. It's just not on me right now. It's still at my parents' house. Okay, I hope this is it because I actually haven't double checked my work this time. I really hope this is right. But that's what I'm getting from this term right over here. And that, so that's like the change in kinetic energy. And sorry, that's minus, right? That's minus because I forgot that, right? Minus 5.67 um, like joules is equal to, and then I'm going to uh, write over here 6.00 times 9.8 times 2 minus mu k times 8 times 9.8 times 2. Okay, so all you have to do if the video ends, just isolate from mu k. And actually, I'll let I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. I God, I hated when textbooks would say that, but I'll leave that genuinely just for because I don't have enough time before this video ends. And the mu k value that I got when I did this like super roughly like weeks ago um, was 0 0.786. Okay. So yeah, definitely just all you have to do is isolate this term and solve and you should get mu k is equal to 0 0.786. And that's the end of our video. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe and um, follow my uh, Instagram. Maybe I'll start posting like more personal stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys care actually, or like more physics -y stuff. I don't know what you guys like. Well, anyways, let me know in the comments um, as per usual, send me an email if you want me to um, answer any of your questions or you can leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.